to a brand new episode of Virtual Coffee. My name is Alexa Collier, and on this podcast, I usually chat with small business owners and early career professionals. And lately, we've been diving into some solo episodes where I share what's been on my mind, uh, but still topics related to owning a small business or just working in general, right? Topics that still would interest you if you are a small business owner or early career professional. Before we dive in today's topic, as always, I'd really appreciate if you could rate and review Virtual Coffee on the Apple Podcasts app if you enjoy this podcast. Really helps us out, helps others discover us who could benefit from our episodes and our discussions. You can also follow us along on all social medias. Uh, that includes Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, even though my TikTok videos are quite silly. Um, it's all at Virtual Coffee Podcast. And I really appreciate your support and those who listen every week. If you're a new listener, if you only listen one time, I appreciate you if you're hearing this. So let's dive into today's solo episode, which is all about getting things done. Now, I did just want to pop in with a life update, nothing major, I just enjoy uh, sharing these updates. I think I'm going to keep it going, just make it a little more personal and you can get to know me a little bit. Nothing crazy happened this past week since I last recorded. We got a new rug for our hallway, a runner rug, which I'm very happy with. We've now bought two rugs from Ruggable and I highly recommend them. Not sponsored, unfortunately. Wish it was. Ruggable sponsor me um but I really enjoy their rugs they're quite like flat like they're not very textured they might have textured ones I'm not sure but uh, they're very simple but also have really awesome designs uh the one in our living room is like blue and has like a streak of orange and it's quite cool hard to describe and the one we just got for the hallway is like an ombre set of striped lines but it goes from like blue to orange to red so just a nice pop of color in the hallway I was really looking forward to that coming ever since we ordered it like a week and a half two weeks ago so really like our new rugs um and other than that life has been pretty good work has been really crazy I knew it was going to ramp up these next few months and just be insane. And that is a beautiful segue into today's topic, which is all about how to get things done, how to get all the things that we're juggling in life done successfully and still be happy and enjoy life. <laughs> Side note, you might hear my dog playing with the new toy we just gave him, which in hindsight was kind of stupid to give him a new toy right before I wanted to record a podcast, but we are just going to roll with it. That is just Oliver making his contribution to this episode. So anyways, I wanted to talk about getting things done. I really like this topic. I'm going to dive kind of into the why, how, what and share my best practices and tips and tricks, but I am quite passionate about being able to get everything you want done that you genuinely want and need to get done in a way that's most effective, most efficient, you're not wasting your time, and you can do it with a good mental headspace and not get too crowded in your brain when you have a lot of things going on. I just think if you have the right tools that work for you available, it's can really help you out. It tools can the right tools for you can really help you just get things done happily and effectively. So there is a book called actually Getting Things Done by David Allen. It's a good book. I haven't read it end to end, but there are really great tips and tricks and tidbits and graphs and visuals in there that I think could really help if you're brand new to this topic or want that type of medium to get this knowledge, you know, reading a book. Highly recommend that book. It's world renowned. He has, I think, a conference around getting things done every year or something like that. He's pretty cool. I like David Allen. I've listened to a few podcasts he's been on. Uh, but Getting Things Done by David Allen. Check it out if you want. And like I said, I think the why behind this topic is, like I said before, so you can do all the things you want to in life. Also, so that you know when you're at your capacity, when you know you can't take 
any new opportunity or any new thing on, I think it's important to know your capacity. And that looks different for everyone. I mean, some people thrive off of juggling multiple things at once. I think I tend to lean towards that way. But of course, I still have capacity, right? I have a point where if I take on one more thing, it's going to be a disaster. And I think I'm I'm approaching that point right now in my life. Well, not really in my life, just in my day to day, right? It's just a really busy season right now at work and in life. Um, so I'm reaching that point And I know that and knowing that has allowed me to say to myself, okay, I have a lot of things going on right now. I chose to do most of them, if not all of them. So it's in my control. And I cannot take on another thing. And that's okay. If I have to take on another thing, like it's a non negotiable, then I know I need to drop something that I'm currently doing. And we'll deal with that then we'll deal with that when we get there but it's in my control and I can do this. It just lets me keep that that clear head, right? Because I know what my peak is and I can work with that. Like I said, that's different for everyone, right? But what's not different is we all have the same amount of time in a day, in a week, in a year. We're all working with the same 24 hours. No one has 25, 26, 27. We all have 24 hours in a day and that doesn't change. So that's kind of, Good to know, right? You literally have a limit to the amount of time you can spend in a day and we can work with that. We can we can start there. Uh, and also acknowledging that everyone has different priorities, right? You, uh, for example, might want to only focus on one project at work and be able to use the rest of your time to just relax, uh, watch YouTube, watch movies, play games, just do whatever you want, have open time, free time. And someone else, kind of like myself, might want multiple projects going on, multiple things in their life, and to the point where their day is pretty packed, uh, that's when I tend to thrive. And everyone's different, and whatever works for you works for you. So definitely keep that in mind as we progress throughout this episode. Now, just to give you some context of some of the things going on in my life, this isn't to say, wow, look at me, look at all the things I have going on. No, I, I don't like that mindset. This is more just to say, you're not alone. <laughs> Everyone has a ton of things going on, whether you can see it or not, whether you know it or not. Um, everyone has things that aren't obvious that they're juggling in the background in their life when they log off from their work computer, etc. We all have a ton of things. Uh, for example, you know, at work, I mentioned I have two projects going on. I'm taking an IDEO course, which I'm actually might do a podcast on. I'm really enjoying it right now, but more to come on that. Uh, I have mentoring. I'm responsible for some marketing things on my team. I'm involved in a lot of our internships and groups, employee-led groups. So work, ton going on there. Um, so even that portion of my day, just a ton going on. And of course, I have my husband and two dogs who take priority. Uh, that's Nathan, my husband, Oliver and Hobbs are the dogs. They're definitely a priority. I have virtual coffee, this podcast, that's kind of my main hobby. Um, that takes priority as well. Probably not as much priority as I'd like, but that's definitely important to me. Um, I try to keep up with my fitness via yoga. It's important to schedule that time. Planning trips, like Nathan and I are going to Asheville, North Carolina in a few weeks, and we're trying to plan a big Christmas trip. So that takes up some time, just traveling. We just bought a house, all things that come with that, like buying new rugs, <laughs> keeping up with our social life, going to our neighborhood's cornhole tournament thing we have going on and scheduling time with friends and relaxing, right? time to myself, going to the pool, reading, listening to podcasts, whatever I, I classify as relaxing. And I'm sure I'm missing a ton of stuff, including like family visiting, you know, visits from Nathan's family, my family, friends, etc. So things pop up. Um, and there's probably more beyond that. But this is just to say, these are the things that I try to juggle and try to keep up with as my priorities throughout life throughout my day. So how I juggle all these things, um, kind of my best practices, tips and tricks, etc. things that work for me personally, more of the theoretical, if you'd say things first are knowing my passions and what drives me. Um, this is kind of also like my why, like why I wake up in the morning, knowing that and always having that more or less in the in the front of your mind, not even in the back of your mind, I think is very helpful navigating all the things you have going on. Knowing 
what you're passionate about, what you want to do, what drives you, what makes you happy, lets you filter out a lot of opportunities that come your way and a lot of things that come your way. Just helps you decide what you want to put your time and energy to because it's the things that you're passionate about that make you happy that you will enjoy doing. That's really key here is when you have a bunch of things going on, if you genuinely enjoy the majority of them, you're rarely going to be freaked out, stressed, anxious, etc. because you're going to be enjoying the things you're, you have going on. Might be a lot of things you have going on, but you're going to be enjoy- enjoying it along the way. So knowing what you want to take on, what you're passionate about is really helpful. And also knowing your priorities. So I always use this example, but the amount of work I have going on right now at my job, I could work 24-7 easily. There's always more work to do. Easily, I could literally work 24 hours a day. But come, you know, four or five after about nine to 10 hours of working, I'm done. That's not my priority anymore. My priority quickly shifts to hang out with Nathan hanging out with the dogs, relaxing, working on the podcast, all those non-work related items now move up that priority list. Um, So really knowing your priorities and when they shift throughout the day and allowing them to shift throughout the day. Uh, For example, when I'm going to bed, work is the last thing on my priority list. I don't want to be thinking about that as I go to bed. Sometimes it's hard not to, (laughs) but then and there, right, that's, that's not my priority. Or when I'm eating dinner with Nathan, My priority isn't work. It's focusing on him, talking about our days, etc. So allowing those priorities to shift, even hour by hour, allowing the flexibility there, I think is really helpful. And then I've mentioned, I think this before on the podcast, but your design principles or your guiding principles. So similar to your priorities and knowing your passions, what are those guidelines that you can give yourself that are true to you that can help you again filter out those opportunities or things you don't want to take on? I think a big thing with getting things done is filtering and knowing when to prioritize something versus not, when to actively take on a task versus when to handle it tomorrow or in an hour or in a minute. Constantly evaluating that for yourself and knowing where you're at in your day, I think is very helpful to getting it all done. And some of the tools I use, like technological (laughs) tools, um, again, some of these might work for you, some of them might not. I think it's more about the concept behind them. But at work, to organize all my to-dos, I use Trello. Um, it's like a to-do list if you're not familiar with Trello. Plenty of other ones exist. I just happen to like Trello. It's what uh, my team tends to use. And that's where I keep track of all my priorities, my to-do list. You can assign due dates, which is really nice because again, with the priorities, if I have a presentation coming up in two weeks, maybe I don't need to prepare for that right this second. I can kind of forget about it. And then my to-do list is gonna remind me maybe a week out, hey, you have this presentation coming up, start prioritizing this, start putting your energy and focus towards this. So it lets you, I I trust my Trello and my system enough now to a point where I know I've captured everything. I mean, knock on wood, I know I've captured everything and can trust the due dates and reminders I've set for myself for them to pop up appropriately. So my system is now so in flow that I trust myself to that point where I only have to worry about what's on my plate for the day because I know that reminder is going to pop up and I'll be ready to take that thing on when it's ready to be taken on or when it's appropriate to take it on. So Trello is a big one for keeping track of my to-dos at work. I actually don't use it outside of work, which kind of surprises me, but I just don't, I don't really have a need for it. I'm sure it'd be helpful, but I just haven't, haven't incorporated that into outside work life. What I do use at home, uh, just for scheduling home things, is honestly the Apple calendar, right? That's on my phone, syncs up to my computer, syncs up to my iPad. We have a shared calendar, Nathan and I, where we put all our shared events on. We can both add and it updates the other's account. So I use that and I put on there, of course, normal things that you'd expect, like appointments, birthdays, visits, things like that. But I also put on there like date night. I have an all day event every Friday for date night. Um, And sometimes I'll put on there 
Uh, well, I'll always put on their yoga when I'm going to yoga. Or sometimes I'll put on their reminders for myself, like reach out to new guests for the podcast. And I think with that, my point is that we spend so much time putting into our calendars work things, responsibilities, things that need to get done. And I don't think many people put in the fun things like date night. I think the resistance there might be, well, why do I have to schedule a date night? That's kind of ridiculous. But I don't think it's ridiculous because if we look at our calendars and all it's filled with is work, that's kind of sad. (laughs) That's not exciting. So we put so much energy scheduling and dedicating time to work and responsibilities Why not do the same for the fun things in life, uh, the relaxing things in life? Those deserve a dedicated time slot too. So that's why I schedule date nights and it really helps us. It really reminds me, oh yeah, Friday's coming up. We should probably make a reservation to go to dinner somewhere or look at the movies that are in theaters. I think it's it's very helpful and it it helps me knowing I have that scheduled. We're going to go on a date night every Friday and we actually do. Um, Of course, barring anything crazy, but... We do a date night every weekend and we love it. I also have multiple email accounts. So I have like my account that I don't care about anymore. Made it when I was, you know, 10 years old. It's a stupid name, but I use that for all my like online shopping accounts, like things I don't care to read every email about. So like that's a section of my brain, right? That email is all for junk stuff. Then I have an email clearly for the podcast. I have an email that I use that's up to date with my current name, you know, my husband's name when we got married that I use for all doctor's appointments now. So just trying to section off and organize your life in those ways, I think is helpful because then I know, okay, when I go into my podcast email, I'm there to do podcast things. When I go into my personal email, that's for appointments and stuff. I know I'm there to like organize something. Then when I go into the junk one, it's just there for, I don't really have to worry about that one too much. So that's really helpful. And what also helps me are routines which kind of is a simple one, but for me, they really help. Like knowing I have a routine for the podcast. I post every Tuesday, so I need to prep an episode before then. And that's just a thing I know to do now. Uh, Yoga, for example, I really can only go like on the weekends, which kind of stinks, but it's just what works with my work schedule right now. But that's a routine. I know that when I get to the end of the week, I can kind of reward myself with yoga class. Um, We also have a day-to-day routine, right? I go to work, we do dinner, walk the dogs, Nathan and I do our own thing, and then we come back together and watch a show. That routine can sometimes get mundane, and that's when we switch it up by going to Asheville, planning a trip, something different. But definitely don't underestimate the power of routines, because that just keeps me naturally organized, and I don't have to schedule dinner, right? Because I know that's going to happen. I don't have to schedule walking the dogs because I know that's just in my routine. So that's how I tend to get things done. Of course, I'm not perfect. I still get stressed. It still gets hard. I still slip up on things, of course, but just finding the tools and the routines and the flows that work for you, I think can really elevate the amount of things you can get done and how you get them done, enjoying getting things done enjoying juggling things and organizing etc so as always you know i'd love to hear your thoughts whether it's in an instagram comment facebook comment type in your thoughts in a review of the podcast which is love what you have to say about this topic and i wish you all luck in your getting things done journey Uh, like i said would love to know if you have tools or best practices tips and tricks let me know we could definitely all benefit from them and i love learning new things but i think that's All that's on top of my mind on this topic, I'm sure I forgot something, but we'll just do another episode about it. (laughs) But thank you all so much for listening. I really appreciate your support and I hope you have a great rest of your day, week, month, etc. And I'll see you next time. See you next week. Thanks everyone. Bye.